So because I'm sick today, uh, I won't make like a normal vlog. I'll just make a... I'll read uh, a short story from the book called No One Belongs Here More Than You by Miranda Gilly. Uh, which of course is stupid because my throat hurts, but we'll give it a try. So the short story I'm going to read for you today is called uh, This Person. So here we go. This person. Someone is getting excited. Somebody somewhere is shaking with excitement because something tremendous is about to happen to this person. This person has dressed for the occasion. This person has hoped and dreamed and now it's really happening and this person can hardly believe it. But believing is not an issue here. The time for faith and fantasy is over. It is really, really happening. It involves stepping forward and bowing. Possibly there is some kneeling, such as when one is knighted. One is almost never knighted. But this person may kneel and receive a tap on each shoulder with a sword. Or, more likely, this person will be in a car or a store under a vinyl canopy when it happens. Or online. Or on the phone. It could be an email. Re your knighthood. Or a long, laughing, rambling phone message in which every person this person has ever known is talking on a speakerphone and they're all saying, You have passed the test. It was all just a test. We were only kidding. Real life is so much better than that. This person is laughing out loud with relief and playing the message back to get the address of the place where every person this person has ever known is waiting to hug this person and bring her into the fold of life. It is really exciting and it's not just a dream, it's real. They are all waiting by a picnic table in the park this person has driven past many times before. There they are. It's everyone. There are balloons taped to the benches. And the girl this person used to stand next to at the bus stop is waving a streamer. Everyone is smiling. For a moment, this person is almost creeped out by the scene. But it would be so like this person to become depressed on the happiest day ever. And so this person bucks up and joins the crowd. Teachers of subjects that this person wasn't even good at are kissing this person and renouncing the very subjects they thought. Math teachers are saying that math was just a funny way of saying I love you. But now they are simply saying it. I love you. And the chemistry and the PE teachers are also saying it and this person can tell they really mean it. It's totally amazing. Certain jerks and idiots and assholes appear from time to time, and it is a is and it is as if they had plastic surgery. Their faces are disfigured with love. The handsome assholes are plain and kind, and the ugly jerks are sweet, and they are folding this person's sweater and putting it somewhere where it won't get dirty. Best of all. Every person this person has ever loved is there, even the ones who got away. They hold this person's hand and tell this person how hard it was to pretend to get mad and drive off and never come back. This person almost can't believe it. It seems so real. This person's heart was broken and has healed and now this person hardly knows what to think. This person is almost mad, but everyone suits this person. Everyone explains that it was absolutely necessary to know how strong this person was. Oh look, there's a doctor who prescribed the medicine that made this person temporarily blind. And the man who paid this person $2,000 to have sex with him three times when this person was very broke. Both of these men are in attendance. They seem to know each other. They both have little medals that they are pinning on this person. They are badges of great honor and strength. 
the badges sparkle in the sunlight and everyone cheers. This person suddenly feels the need to check her post office box. It's an old habit, and even if everything is going to be terrific from now on, this person still wants mail. This person says that she'll be right back, and everyone this person has ever known says, fine, take your time. This person gets in her car and drives to the post office, and opens the box and there is nothing. Even though it's a Tuesday, which is famously a good day for mail. This person is so disappointed, this person gets back in the car and, having completely forgotten about the picnic, drives home and checks the voicemail, and there are no new messages, just the old one about passing the test and life being better. There are no emails, either, probably because everyone is at the picnic. This person can't seem to go back to the picnic. This person realizes that staying home means blowing off everyone this person has ever known. But the desire to stay in is very strong. This person wants to run a bath and then read in bed. In the bathtub, this person pushes the bubbles around and listens to the sound of millions of them popping at once. It almost makes one smooth sound instead of many tiny sounds. This person's breasts barely jut out of the water. This person pushes the bubbles onto the breasts and make weird shapes with the foam. By now everyone must have realized that this person is not coming back to the picnic. Everyone was wrong. This person is not who they thought this person was. This person plunges underwater and moves her hair around like a sea anemone. This person can stay underwater for an impressively long time, but only in a bathtub. This person wonders if there will ever be an Olympic contest for holding your breath underwater. If there were such a contest, this person would surely win it. An Olympic medal might redeem this person in the eyes of everyone this person has ever known. But no such contest exists. So there will be no redeeming. This person mourns the fact that she has ruined her one chance to be loved by everyone as this person climbs into bed. The weight of the tragedy seems to bear down upon this person's chest. And it's a comforting weight. Almost human in heft. This person sighs. This person's eyes begin to close. This person sleeps.